The if function is probably the most important function you can learn in Excel. So I've put together not one, not two, but five examples of how to use it from easy to hard. So to kick things off at level one, we have a simple if function. Here's the data set, which you can download for free in the video description. And as you can see, we have the names of some people. We have how many clients they've brought in. And we want to make a condition that says that if these employees over here have brought in over 20 clients, then, then they deserve to get a bonus. So for this, we're going to just go to equals if we'll hit the top key there. And the logical test is what we're testing for. So we said that we want this figure here, this new clients figure to be greater than 20. If they brought in more than 20 clients, we'll hit the comma. Then it says value if true. Well, if that is the case, we want to give them a bonus. So we'll put a yes in quotations. Whenever we put text, we have to put it around quotations. So we'll put a yes there, close the quotations, comma, and now if false, meaning that if they don't meet that criteria of greater than 20 clients, then we're going to put a no in quotations, close the quotations, close the parenthesis and hit enter there. So the first one has a yes. And now we can double click over here to the side. And you can see that for Anna, it's a no, as she has less than 20 new clients. Now, if you want to emphasize this a bit more, we could also add some conditional formatting. So just go to control shift down here under conditional formatting. We're going to go to highlight the cell rules that are equal to a yes. Let's go ahead and put that in green and hit on OK. Now it's very clear who deserves a bonus. Awesome. That's level one done, but it doesn't seem very fair that they all get the same bonus, whether it's 25 new clients or 50. That's where level two comes in with the ifs function. See, before we only had a yes or a no as an option, but now we can have multiple hurdles depending on how many clients they brought. So over here under the bonus, let's go ahead and put the equals. Ifs is the top, hit the top key there. It's with an S in the end. And so we want to have multiple logical tests. Maybe the first one is over 40 clients, then we'll pay them $5,000. Then over 20 clients, maybe we just pay them $1,000. And finally, we can have a third option at less than 20 clients, then it's going to be zero. So if the logical test here is greater than 40, comma, then the value if true is that we want it to have 4,000. We don't need these in quotations as it's not text and it's a number, comma. The logical test too is that if this same C3, which we can't quite see right now, is greater than 20, comma, then we just want to give them $1,000 in bonus. While if that C3 again, this is the third logical test now, is less than or equals to 20, then we don't want to give them any money as a bonus, so we'll just put a zero there, close up parenthesis and hit enter. And let's drag this down by double clicking here. And you can see that the people that are less than 20 don't get a bonus. Those that are above that 40 get 4,000. Those that are in between get 1,000. In this case, we added three options for the ifs, but really you can go up to 127. Now moving up to level three, and here we have multiple conditions. Maybe we don't just want it to be based on the client count, but also based on how happy that client is. So some kind of a satisfaction score. And for that, we'll use a nested if. So let's take a look over here. You can see that we have a new column for ratings. So we basically want to go to the end and we'll go to equals if We'll hit the tab key there. And so we don't have one logical test anymore. We want that clients to be above that 20, but we also say we want the rating to be above a five. So we actually have two different logical tests. So therefore we're going to add the and function in there. Hit the tab key there. And so now we can add more than one logical test as you can see here. So the first one is the new clients being greater than 20, comma, and we can also add a second one that's going to be, you can see we're in logical two right now. It's going to be this figure right here, which we can't quite see, which is the rating greater than five. So those are the logical tests. We can close out of that. 
And now you can see we're back in the if function, comma. So the value if true, well, we want it to say yes, because we want, that, we want to give them a bonus, comma. And the value if false, we'll just put a no in quotations there. Close a parenthesis and you can see, and we can just hit enter. We'll double click on here to drag it down. And now we have both criteria in there. Later in the video, we'll learn even more powerful features about the if function, like the wildcard. But first, if you want to learn more formulas than just the if, check out our Excel for business and finance course using the link in the description below. We won't just go over formulas though, we'll also cover formatting best practices and shortcuts, building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. If all of that sounds interesting, check out the link in the description below. And if you want more than just Excel, we also have other courses such as Power BI, Finance Evaluation, and much more. All right, back to the video. Awesome. Now that we understand the if function, we can actually go up a level and apply it to other functions like the sum ifs. So let's take a look at an example over here. This basically says that, hey, only sum if a certain condition is true. In this case, we have two conditions where we want it to be olives specifically, and we want them to be in the country of Spain. If that is the case, we want to find the quantity. So it's going to combine the sum function and the ifs. So we'll go to equals sum if, and you can see we have two options. The sum if singular here would only allow for one criteria. So we want to go for the sum ifs, which allows for multiple. We'll hit the tab key there. And the sum range is whatever we want as the result to be summed, which is basically all of the quantity range for us. So we'll go control shift down, comma, the criteria range is going to be our first set of criteria. Where can we find it? Well, the range is the range of products. So we'll go control shift down, comma, and the criteria, well, we want it to be specifically olives, comma again. And now we move on to the second criteria. So where can we find the second range? Well, it's over here under all of the countries, control shift down, comma, and that criteria number two is going to be right over here. You can't quite see it, but it's basically the country of Spain. We can close up parenthesis and hit enter. So you can see that it summed all of the quantity of olives in Spain. And the way we've done it, we haven't actually typed Spain in there or olives in there, meaning that this is all dynamic. So we can change this to something like wine. We can even change the country to something like France. And you can see that our results are going to update dynamically. Now the sum ifs isn't the only variation of the if statement. If we go in here, you can also type equals to count ifs. You can see that they have it in singular and plural. And the same thing goes for the average if, as you can see right there. One would take the average quantity, while the other would take the count of occurrences. And finally, in number five, we have the wildcard feature. That probably doesn't make much sense. So let me show you an example. Over here, you can see that we have the same data set, except that the order ID is now looking like a complete mess. That's because we have the ID number here instead of just having the country. And you can see that some numbers come after the country while others come before the country. So this makes it quite difficult to do a normal sum ifs because it's simply not going to detect the country as France. Instead, it would see a 500 in front and it wouldn't think that's the same. So we need to find a way to work around that. That's where the wildcard feature comes in. So we'll type equals to sum ifs. At the beginning, it's all going to be the same. So we want to sum all of the quantities here. Control shift down, comma. The criteria range is, well, first all of the olives. This part's all correct, so we won't have any issues with it, comma. This is the first criteria, comma. Now the second criteria range is all of this area right here, comma. And now this is where it gets different. The criteria number two is simply going to be the country. So we just have it at G4. I know you can't see it right now, but it can't just be the same because if we only do that and hit enter, you'll see that it finds no results for France, even though we do have France a few times in here. 
So we need to go back in there and somehow tell it that, hey, ignore any values that you might have before or after. That's where we would put it in quotations. We're gonna put an asterisk, close the quotations, and then we'll put an ampersand there, tie it to that number. Then at the end of G4, we'll put another ampersand, and then in quotations again, we'll put another asterisk. Now we can just hit enter, and you can see that it's detecting things. We can even change this to Spain, and it's all going to move dynamically. Basically, to run you through what we've done here, we've told Excel to ignore if there's any values in front, or if there's any values after. If there is an exact match, meaning there's France and France, then we should be able to still use it. That's what's happening here, where even though we have Spain just in one word, it's able to detect it right over here, even though it has these numbers. This wildcard feature also applies to other formulas like the VLOOKUP or the XLOOKUP. If you're not too sure how those work, check out this video over here to go over some advanced Excel formulas or take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.